How's it going, people of the internet? I thought it'd be fun to go live from my phone. I've never done it. And I'm sitting here, I'm early for my kids, pick them up from school way early. So I've got about 20 minutes to kill. And I thought it'd be fun to just hop on and see, how do you do this thing mobile? I'm always like at my desk and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm attached, I've got headphones in, I've got all different kinds of things going on usually. And I thought it'd be fun to just like hop on here with my phone and see what horrible quality my phone decides to do for the stream. <laughs> uh, so, all right, let's talk about some stuff. I don't know, I don't even know, do I get comments on here? I've never, I've never done this on here. Is it? I see that there are a couple people who are here. Hit the like button and hop in the chat so I can see what this even does. <laughs> um, let's talk a little bit about something I saw. I'm probably going to do like another stream later on this week when I find the time, which is partially why I'm like, yeah, let's, let's try this thing right now. Um, when I find the time, I'm probably going to do another stream about reformed leaders and those who have fallen and what to do about them because you know i did my stream yesterday okay i'm starting to see some of these chats hop in test oh no you're streaming from your car yeah i am and you guys are watching it still i'm gonna sell all my equipment that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> this is gonna be the normal now i'm gonna become one of those people who just rants in their cars instead of ranting in my basement where i belong <laughs> It's, oh man, yep. I'm I'm a total hypocrite. I wouldn't watch me, but you guys can. <laughs> uh bummer, I'm just getting off work so I can't be on much longer. I'm so sorry, Matthew. Um I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um yeah, but I want to do a stream later on in the week talking about what to do with these guys because you know, I I talked yesterday, I did my little impromptu stream of Mark Driscoll and, uh, you know, some of these people like Ruslan talking positively about him and all these people who seem to forget. And I've gotten messages already from people from Mars Hill saying thank you, you know, saying thanks for, you know, letting people know, like, it's not OK what what Mark did to us. And um, but at the same time, you know, I've seen some of the pushback, too, from accounts. Some of them I blocked. Some of them, you know, I just left up. Um, but also, uh, Ruslan, I don't know if he saw my stream cause I never want to just assume that anybody watches my stuff. Um, but you know, he has hopped in chats and stuff like that. So I know he, he periodically watches my stuff. I'll put it that way. And, uh, he decided to talk about like someone in his chat yesterday was talking about how Mark Driscoll like just being a part of the Demon Slayers documentary um, and documentary. Come on. It's not really a documentary. Uh, it's just basically like, look at me. Look what I can do. Uh, it reminds me of Stuart <laughs> from Mad TV. <laughs> Is that too mean? I don't know. Um, but, you know, whatever. They're doing their thing. But someone was talking about the Demon Slayers documentary and basically being like, uh, you know, because Mark Driscoll is a part of it. I know it's heretical. And Ruslan pushed back pretty hard against that. But in saying some stuff, I think he might have been talking about my video. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it's just prideful to assume that it was my video. But it's at least what I've been kind of focusing on. And so he started talking about this purity spiral. Like, oh, you know, it's part of this purity spiral. Once someone has done something... You know, they're just incapable of good for the rest of their, you know, time on this earth. And I just got to say that's such, that's such garbage. Like that, the, like equating church discipline with cancel culture is just so odd to me. Like we're talking about something that's biblical, church discipline is biblical. What Mark Driscoll was going through at Mars Hill before he bailed on it was biblical. And to just say, oh, 
you know, he messed up and like, you know, it's, it's not just like Ruslan, but it's like tons of people who are just like, oh, it, you know, you're just talking about the past and bringing up all those blemishes again, you know, whatever, you're going to hold this against him forever. And the answer is no, because of church discipline, like the whole point of church discipline is that you actually like go through stuff together. And like the whole point of church discipline is the end of reconciliation. Like it isn't just to like, oh, someone gets punished for doing wrong. It's that, yes, there might be consequences for people's actions, but at the, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel of reconciliation so they can come back in and be part of the church once again. And maybe that means that that person isn't in leadership ever again, but it does mean that, you know, they're on right standing even with, you know, horrible things that have been done within that church or outside of that church, and there needs to be consequences there. Like, the whole point of church discipline is reconciliation. So it's just odd to me that so many people are talking about, like, this purity spiral, as if that's a bad thing, you know, when it comes to, like, the idea of people being upstanding Christians within the church. And this is the thing that I think so many of you guys, you underdogs, and uh, like people who have dealt with deconstruction, we get really well. <laughs> like that there is this thing that of just hypocrisy that's going on in the church right now. And so many people are willing to look over that hypocrisy because of who that person is. Or to overlook like really bad. It's, it might not be like, oh, he's hurt hundreds of people like Mark Driscoll. But like even like when I push back against like John Piper or John MacArthur, I can say that there are good things that John Piper and John MacArthur have done. And I can say that God has used those men in really big ways. But that doesn't mean they're perfect. And I keep on getting like this, this phrase thrown at me of, of like purity spiral of like, well, they're just different from you. And so you're just saying that everyone has to be the exact same as you. And then when they don't fit into those categories that you want them to, you write them off forever. No, like at least I, I'll just speak for myself and say like, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about, hey, there are issues. Why can't we talk about the issues? Like, why is it this, that, this thing going on right now of like, if you talk about leaders, you have to be like kissing their butts. And just talking about how amazing these people are all the time. And just if you say anything negative about them, well, then you're just cancel culture. You're just purity spiral. You're just like fitting into all these sociological categories of basically just writing people off. And that's not what I'm about. And I don't think that's what most people are about as far as Christians go. Like it is just about accountability. And I think it's such an odd thing to go from the world and talking about what they do with cancel culture and saying like people like Carl Lentz are just, oh, it's a purity spiral. You know, like, oh, you're just, you, you're, you're basically saying like he can't be on staff at Mike Todd's church because of what he did all those years ago, as if it was so long ago. That was two years ago. Like, and then everything with Mark Driscoll, people forget. Like that was 2016. Like that, these, these things weren't that long ago. Like, it's not like we're talking about like, oh, in the eighties, in the eighties, this guy did this thing and we're still holding it against him. Well, it hasn't even been a decade. <laughs> like what, what are we doing? And it's just so weird to me. So if anyone is going to come into any of my videos and talk about like purity spiral, I'll just point you to Matthew 18. <laughs> like it's not a purity spiral. It's just accountability. That's a biblical concept. Like, I don't know, I don't know why you're taking your theology from the world so much, but this holding leaders accountable, that's always been something that the church has done. Now, we're getting into this place where it's a little weird because we're not just talking about local churches anymore. Like, because there has to be something. Like, there has to be some way uh, of Christians who are on other sides of the planet now, being able to have at least some form of accountability or at least calling someone to account like from, from far away because these people 
they get to have influence in all those places. You know, Mark Driscoll puts up a video and it reaches all around the world. But when he does actions, like we just pretend like, oh, only the people at Trinity Church can do anything about it. That's weird, isn't it? Like we're getting, we're getting into this place where people have like their influence just growing and growing and growing, but their accountability is limiting and limiting and limiting. And while like, certainly I'm not talking about like church discipline as a whole needs to be done by the entirety of like the universal church. But I am saying like that I can call Mark Driscoll out. You can call Mark Driscoll out. People around the world can say, hey, I heard this. Like if, if we didn't have that teaching coming to us, we wouldn't be able to hold him account, right? Like we wouldn't be able to say, I disagree with this thing. So if it's coming to you, I think you have, you know, at least the option to say, I disagree with this in a public way. Like it doesn't mean you go like burning bridges everywhere, but come on. Um, let's see. Oh, this is kind of cool. I like this. I got to keep, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing like, live streams from my car like my mom used to whenever I FaceTime her and just get this. Uh, but let's see. Uh, Reformed Pilgrims here and says, please pray for Maine over the mass casualty event last night. The police haven't caught the suspect yet. I ju yeah, I just saw some news about that, about the manhunt is on. That's awful. It keeps on happening. Like there was also just today, I think there was another shooting in um, North Carolina. Clinton, I think, North Carolina. I just heard about that. It's awful. So, yes, we'll definitely be praying. Uh, David says, can't take the documentary seriously. It shares the title with a popular anime. <laughs> yeah, it does. I, I've, I haven't seen Demon Slayers, the anime. Um, but I know about it because they had a movie just come out, right? And it was all over the place and did pretty well, at least from what I could see. Mark says, clearly green screened. <laughs> yes, because that's, that's what I want. I want a green screen of the inside of my 2004 Kia Sedona. <laughs> that's that's what I want. <laughs> that's that, that would be. You know, what I was thinking about. I've been thinking about changing up my setup for a long time, and, and I came up with the 2004 Kia Sedona. I think that would be great. Uh, Joseph here says Mark Driscoll is still unrepentant because he still blames the elders and not himself. That's why Dean still brings it up because Mark has no fruit of repentance. Dean is correct on this. Yeah, and it's not like Mark has to apologize to me. I don't care. Like, I wasn't there. All I'm doing is trying to give a voice for people that were hurt. And everyone, like, do you, do you realize how belittling that is for some of these YouTubers and podcasters and even, like, the makers of the Demon Slayer documentary thing? Like, for them to just platform him anyways even though he hasn't repented, even though there hasn't been like any sorrow over anything that he's done, like how belittling that is to the people of Mars Hill, like the people who were hurt to just be like, ah, I mean, like it was a long time ago, get over it. Right. Like, come on. Or, or just like, ah, I don't believe you like that. That's so belittling and it just, it, it shouldn't happen. Uh, Joseph also says, it's a culture thing, Dean. We like worship our pastors uh, and can't say anything about them. I saw it so much in the prosperity gospel circles. In that aspect, GCC and the like operate the same way. Yeah, yeah, you might be right on that. It's, it seems like it's just this thing where we just have our guys and we just like them no matter what. And like the biggest thing for me is like, why are they your guys? <laughs> like... Like, why, why, why do we have these guys as if, like, they're amazing in every aspect, they could do no wrong? Like, how do they earn that spot? Because, like, when I listen to some of these people that are the guys for people, it's just like, why him? Like, there's so many good ones, like, just out there. Like, here's, here's the thing. Like, I don't talk about Alistair Begg that much, um, but, like... <laughs> Like, if Alistair Begg is your guy and he said something wrong, like, I don't think it would be the same thing. I don't think people would come out with the same kind of rhetoric and the same kind of, like, I don't know, just, like, like just anger. <laughs> like, it's just, like, because it's Alistair Begg. You can see why someone would become an Alistair Begg fan because of his preaching. 
but you know, when it comes to John MacArthur, there's so much anger when you talk about anything that he's said or done and said is negative in any way. And I always tell people like, you know what? Like he's, he's, uh, he's done a lot of good things. He really has. He's like, I've been very helped by John MacArthur's ministry as far as my own ministry and expository preaching. Like I've been incredibly helped, but that doesn't mean he deals with everything perfectly. <laughs> Like, and even if he was my guy at some point, like, obviously I saw something that I didn't like and like shift it. And I, I don't know why people can't shift from their guys. Like if you have someone that you really, really like, cool. But as soon as you see something that's like really off and like, they'll say, oh, there's that purity spiral again. But if it's significantly off, like, can't you shift? And just be like, oh, well, you know, I really disagree with him here and here. Um, but it just seems like a lot of people just can't. And I don't know what that is. I don't know if it's just like their like loyalty or maybe the reason why that be, that teacher became their guy. It's just odd to me that people can't admit faults in teachers or in teachings. Like maybe we're not even talking about like the, the personality of that teacher. We're just talking about like the teaching themselves. And like some people can't even get past that. It's just, it's really weird. It is weird. And it is somewhat like a, a form of idolatry, I think. Uh, Israel is here and says, there are still people from Mars Hill that like him. It is a cult of personality, just like Trump supporters. Really? I haven't found, uh, like, I haven't found that to be true for the interactions that I've had. Everyone from Mars Hill that has contacted me has contacted me to say thank you for, you know, saying something. I felt alone, you know, like I, um, you know, I was like, or just to let me know that they were connected and that they were hurt and that took them a long time to find another church. Like I, I've talked to quite a few people, people on staff at Mars Hill, uh, a lot of congregants, and it's usually that. I, I haven't heard anybody push back like no one from Mars Hill has pushed back. I've gotten a lot of pushback from other people, <laughs> but not from the people of Mars Hill. Um, but I'm sure like with someone like that, you know, there are always going to be the loyalists. Like there are always going to be the people that are just like, again, that's my guy. Um, Jen is here and says, you're the best. What? You're crazy. <laughs> Thanks anyways. <laughs> RJ is here and says, hi. I like this. This is kind of cool. It's a little weird for my big thumbs to like navigate the chat, but you know. Uh, I don't understand how, RJ says, I don't understand how Driscoll is platformed. I also hope that caring for the body of Christ becomes an important, as important as reaching new souls. Ooh, that, that'll that preach. Um, you know, not by you because you're a woman, but, you know, <laughs> just playing. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that, like, we're so wanting to pe get people out of hell. Uh, but as soon as we get them into the kingdom, we just treat them like garbage. <laughs> like, that's, that's weird. That's a weird thing. We need to work on that. All of us. We need to work on that. Uh, Luke says, you said you wouldn't watch a YouTube video that was recorded in a car. Yes, but I didn't say I wouldn't make one, Luke. That's the difference. That's the difference. Also, it's just like this is kind of fun, to be honest. Like I, I now get it. I'm, I'm, all right. I repent. In sackcloth and ashes, okay? Like, making videos in your car is kind of rad. <laughs> like, this, this is kind of fun. I like this. This is a way better use of my time <laughs> than just sitting here listening to a podcast for 20 minutes while I wait. <laughs> um, why can't we shift? We need to, says Joseph. I agree. Uh, let's see. What else? Howdy, Dean from Steven. What's up, Steven? And Michelle is here. And RJ, I did get a laugh. <laughs> and Luke says, you shifted. That's true. I did shift. Like, I shift in hands. Oh my God. It's, I will say that. Next time I do this, I need to, like, bring, like, one of those selfie sticks and look like a total dweeb in my car. <laughs> Just being like, what's up, guys? What's up? <laughs> I thought about doing this on Instagram. You guys follow me on Instagram? Let me know if you follow me on Instagram. Um, but like, I'll, I'll probably do, save this kind of stuff for Instagram because I'm kind of curious about like the bit rate and how like the, the quality of it looks compared to the other. I'm, I'm a, I'm a nerd like that. So I'm going to like do like the pixel peeping and be like, I think Insta Instagram is more built for doing lives 
but I don't know. Maybe not. <sighs> RJ says, I do. All right, you do follow me on Instagram. That's cool. Uh, not many people do. All right, I see one of my kids, so I'm going to go. Uh, but thanks for hanging out with me for a couple minutes, so I'll probably try to do an actual live stream from my desk, from my basement, later on in the week. I'll see you. See you then. I, I don't know how to end. Do I end it here? Yes.